Good morning, everyone. As I promised you today, we're going to fill out the application form to immigrate to Italy under the elective resident visa. We're going to start with the first question and go through all the process step by step. So the first thing you need to uh, print out this application. Obviously, you can't type or write anything here. So what you can do, you print it out and start using um, a pen to fill it out. Don't forget about the photo here on the right side. Let's start with the true name, your last name, and then again, your last name, if was different at birth, your first name and the given name, which is the same thing, and then the date of birth, place of birth, country of birth, current nationality, and the nationality at birth, if different. Moving to the next question, which is um, the sex, which is if you were male or female, the status, if you are single, separated, married, or divorced. Moving to the next question, which is in case of minor, I don't think a minor would apply for such a visa or such a program, but just in case, the parents should sign on behalf of him. The nationality identity number, which is your ID, if you have it, it's not really um, essential. That's my own opinion. You can leave it blank. And the type of travel document it was an ordinary passport, service passport, or diplomatic. And then the number of your travel document, which is your passport, the date of issue, valid until and issued by. And then moving to the applicant's home address and email address, your telephone number. Next question, resident in a country other than the country of current nationality. For example, if you were Indian, Kenyan, Nigerian, any nationality, and you live in Dubai, you click on yes and provide your ID number and the expiry date. And then the current occupation, if you were a manager, doctor, engineer, and the, um, the company that you work for, you should provide all the details about that company or your employer. And then the main purpose of journey, you should click on um, tourism, for example, or visiting family or friends, uh, medical uh, reasons, self-employed, other, you can just, you know, check on other and write here for tourism. And then um, the member states of destination. Absolutely, you're going to Italy. So you should just uh, put down there Rome or Milan. It depends which city you're interested in the most. And the first entry, it's going to be, of course, Rome. And I highly suggest you to click on multiple entries. It shows that... Um, you know what you're doing and you're gonna fly back home. If you needed something, then go back again to Italy. So you don't need to click on single entry. And the duration intended stay, you can just um, uh, put 90 days or um, 100 days. That's not really something that you should be worried about because this is a long stay visa and it's not really tied to specific period of time. And um, they're asking you if you were um, issued any uh, Schengen visas in the last uh, three years. You can just write down the number of the visa and the validity and from which embassy and until what time was valid. Or you can check when did you give your uh, fingerprints the last time at the embassy and give them the date. Another thing here, um, the intended date of arrival in the Schengen area. So let's say the process is gonna take two or three months so I highly recommend you to have plans after three months from now, if you're planning to apply and you start gathering your documents right now, I highly recommend you to plan for the next three months or after three months from now. The intended date of departure, just um, you can, you can just um, mention that you can uh, departure after three or four or five months. That's not um, an issue because this is not a tourist visa. That's the thing. And now the sure and the first name of the inviting person. Of course, there's nobody who's inviting you because this is a long-term visa and based on other purposes. So what you can do, you can write down the address of the apartment or the uh, room that you have rented or you booked on Airbnb with the address and the postal code. And then absolutely here, the address and email uh, address of the person, which is the same thing for the landlord or the apartment's owner. And then, that, because once you book your room on Airbnb, you're gonna get their phone number and their email address. 
and the telephone number and the fact the fact it's not really necessary to be provided and the name and address of the inviting company organization you can just leave it blank as long as you provided the other information that we talked about the telephone and fax number the same thing which is this follows the same question so you can leave it blank or just cross and then the cost of traveling and living during the applicant's stay is covered. So here you're going to provide the total number or the total amount of the money that you're going to deposit in your bank account. So for example, if you deposited $10,000, you can just write down that I'm uh, having $10,000 to settle down, to find a rental property, to spend for transportation, for you know buying furniture and stuff. So you can put $5,000, $10,000, or even the 31,000 euros that we talked about in the first video. And then here they're asking you if um, the means of support, if it's going to be cash, credit cards, or any other way of payment, you can just specify and write down on other details. Or if you're going to get your money from your spouse, your partner, a family member, you can specify here as well on the right side. Scrolling down, we're almost done. And here the personal data of a family member who is an EU citizen or a permanent resident. So you can um, just leave their sure name, first name, nationality. If you don't have anyone, just leave it blank, the whole field. You don't have to worry about it. And here I'm aware that the visa fee is not refunded if the visa is refused. So if you got rejected, you know that you're going to lose the fees. So you just write your name here or sign it. This is pretty much it. And then here as well, you have to provide the place and date and the, your telephone number and then sign it. That's pretty much it. Just bring it out and fill it out and submit it with other documents that we talked about in the first video. If you guys have any comments, leave it in the comment section, or if you have any questions, you can send us an email. Thank you so much and have a good one.